Hey everyone, welcome back to our monthly installment where we take a look at the best looking new upcoming PC launches. April is appearing to be on the slower side of things. It's probably actually going to be one of the slower months of the year. We still have games to talk about, but when it comes to like bigger titles, not really a lot going on. For the most part, we're looking at some smaller scale indie games. We've got some early access releases. We got some games coming out of early access. I still think there's stuff to be excited about here, um, but you know, we're not getting a ton of blockbusters, I guess is the point. So first up on our list this month, we've got Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga. This is probably actually the biggest, biggest name game that we have. This new Lego game has us playing through all nine Star Wars saga films from the very start you get to pick which trilogy you want to begin with. So you could start in episode seven as Poe fighting back the First Order or in episode one as Qui-Gon escaping this failed negotiation or go back to episode four and play as R2, D2 and C3PO trying to save the fate of the galaxies. There's actually over 300 unlockable characters apparently. You'll play as Jedi, Sith, the Rebel, Bounty Hunter, Droids, and many other characters. Uh, the game features third-person action combat. They've got new mechanics over prior prior LEGO games. There's like combo chains, counterattacks. They've made improvements to blaster combat, and there's a cover system as well. And of course, you'll get to use force powers to lift objects, attack enemies, and even influence the decisions of others. There's a skill tree letting you upgrade your attacks, and even unlock some character-specific abilities. There's gonna be space Space combat where you'll fly TIE fighters and X-Wings or the Millennium Falcon and um, you'll get to unlock new planets as you play traveling through besides like the main store you can kind of do a bit of exploring and just go check out some like of the famous Star Wars locations. This thing actually looks pretty great uh, which I'm surprised I'm saying this I, I couldn't imagine myself playing a Lego game in 2022. No particular reason I don't like have anything against the Lego games but this actually looks pretty cool like they really are checking a lot of the Star Wars boxes here and hey you know what from the trailers I watched I think some of the humor it, it was a chuckle inducing at the very least. This is going to be launching on April 5th and is priced currently at $49.99. This next title I'm very excited for. This is Demio, an RPG dungeon crawler that is styled like a tabletop game. Originally, this actually released as a VR only title back in May 2021, and they are now launching the PC edition that's been adjusted for mouse and keyboard play without the VR stuff. So you don't need a VR headset anymore. You can play this like a normal PC game. And this looks really cool. Um, numerous mechanical changes, of course, for the PC edition. There's a whole new UI and menu navigation, uh, character selection, how you move and engage with the environment and interact with things. All of that's been adjusted. The game features three unique adventure campaigns where you fight through several floors, navigating traps, solving puzzles, and fighting enemies until you reach the very last floor where you'll take on a boss. It's a turn-based combat system with action points that you'll have to use to move, interact with things, uh, attack and cast spells. There will be dice rolls as well that play into this as well as playable cards that kind of act like potions and skills and things like that. The game features five different playable characters. You've got a tank, assassin, mage, hunter, and a bard. It features two to four player co-op. There's a solo skirmish mode where you can control multiple characters yourself, and there's gonna be cross play with the VR version. Now, the original VR version of the game is fairly highly rated. The Steam reviews currently sit at very positive. I am gonna be curious to see what people think about the game without the VR gimmick and just as a PC title. Sometimes the VR aspects can carry an otherwise average game to a higher rating. I'm not saying that that's the case here, but I'm just saying in general, like, hey, you know what? I played and I liked Orbis VR, but I don't think I would like that game as just a regular PC game. The VR really makes the difference, but we'll see what happens. This does look pretty cool. Uh, the Demio PC edition is launching into Steam Early Access on April 7th, and uh, the VR version is also priced at $29.99, so I'm assuming the PC edition will be priced similarly. Forgive Me Father is a dark retro horror FPS set in a comic book style world inspired by the novels of H.P. Lovecraft. The game launched into early access last year and is now getting its 1.0 final update and official release. Uh, this game is meant to imitate like classic 90s first person shooters, or as the kids call them, 
boomer shooters. Uh, it's got time-lapse animations, uh, elements of 2D and 3D environments. You'll pick up first aid kits, there's life points, there's non-reloading weapons, power-ups, and it says to have a dynamic combat system with numerous types of opponents. In addition to your various weapons, you'll also be wielding dark madness inducing powers and you'll have to kind of balance out your ma madness level as the more you use it, the crazier things get, directly influencing the gameplay and also having this like cool looking audio visual effect on top of it. We've got this dark setting and atmosphere. Again, all of this inspired by HP Lovecraft. Um, there's two playable heroes in the game with their own play styles and skill trees to progress. And this full release version is going to be bringing some new additions beyond what's already in the early access release. There will be a fourth and fifth act coming, three new bosses, a new character, new story elements, and a new game plus mode, as well as general improvements to things like the UI, sound, controller support, and improved localization. Like a lot of the games on this month's list, the early access version is highly rated, and it does seem like it could be a fun little game. Uh, the full release is happening on April 7th, and currently the game is priced at $19.99. Next up, we've got some new content for Back 4 Blood. You remember that co-op Left 4 Dead spin-off game? Well, it's getting the Tunnels of Terror DLC, which adds an all-new co-op activity known as the Ridden Hives. Players will be exploring these different dungeon locations filled with these labyrinth of tunnels and a new type of zombies or Ridden, uh, landmine setting urchins, monstrous shredders, and these damage dealing rippers. These Ridden Hives are offer, again, a unique play experience, but also exclusive loot and rewards. There's also two new playable cleaners coming to the game, eight exclusive character skins, uh, seven new legendary weapons, 12 uh, weapon skins, new cards, and more. And this expansion also coincides with a uh, update to the base game, adding the No Hope difficulty setting, which is a free update uh, coming to the game for an extra level of challenge. On top of that, they say there will be no microtransactions of any any kind in this DLC, cosmetic or otherwise, they're just not adding it. Now the Tunnels of Terror DLC launches on April 12th and it should be noted, this is not a free update, it is a paid update, it is paid DLC, which kind of surprises me as the game still sits at a mixed rating on Steam. Although I should note that SteamDB shows the game has a small but fairly active community. They still average around three to 5,000 peak daily concurrent players. That is not nothing and certainly enough to keep the game running. Now they do mention that players will have access to all of the uh, DLC's content as long as one person in their party has purchased it. I guess I'm just surprised that they're selling DLC for how like poor the reception was for Back for Blood. I'm just, you know, it feels like almost as a make good, this should be a free update. For a game that got such a lukewarm reception, I'm just not sure how much of a boost to their player count they're gonna get with a paid update like this, but we'll see. Maybe the uh, new No Hope difficulty setting will be enough, or the fact that as long as one person in your party has the DLC, everyone can play it. Maybe that will incentivize enough people to come back and check it out, I don't know. You're a gun is is a top-down shooter where you play as a mech facing off against endless hordes of corrupted machines. The game features what they call fast-paced top-down combat that tests your skills and reflexes. It's got handcrafted levels tailored for intense, tightly measured challenge and an array of deadly weapons and upgrades that you unlock as you progress. Like the further you get, the more access to different things that you uh, unlock essentially. This is a pretty simple, but looks like it could be a fun game. When it comes into early access, it will be launched It'll be launching in early access on April 12th and includes three locations, 25 missions, 10 enemy types, one boss fight, five weapons, which have mods for each of them, and four special attacks. I did some digging. They said that they expect the early access launch to contain roughly two hours of gameplay. I feel like that's a little bit light to be launching with as, it, you know, maybe they should have... I don't know. We'll see. I guess it really depends on its price. Uh, how much How much do you charge for this? It's got to be under $20 if they're only saying two hours of gameplay with this. I mean, as it is from what I've seen from the footage, it seems like a pretty simple game. You know what I mean? Like it could be fun to mess around with for a little while, but nothing that's probably going to hold anyone's attention in the long term. Uh, when I first saw this, I was like, this looks cool. I could see myself playing it for a few hours. 
but not even a few, just two. <laughs> two is all we got, apparently. Anyways, next up is Ghost Lore, an East Punk action RPG where you fight monsters from Southeast Asian folklore. They call this a modern take on classic ARPGs, features uh, detailed items and character customization, procedurally generated map, and 2D isometric art. Uh, this game pulls a lot of inspiration from ARPGs like old school Diablo, but also modern day things like Grim Dawn and Path of Exile. They've got a multi-class system where you can mix and match abilities from three out of these six character classes to make your own unique hero. There are glyphs, these magical symbols that you'll inscribe onto your body, granting you power, boosting your damage or your tankiness or just general utility. And then as you level up, you'll get access and ability to use more glyphs. There's a variety of weapons uh, prevalent in Southeast Asian martial arts, and it'll be coming to Steam Early Access on April 14th. The gameplay features a single player mode they say this is a hundred percent uh that's 100 percent implemented all of the single player elements and then over the course of early access they'll be adding more locations monsters multiplayer and a procedurally generated endless mode pretty cool look to this one uh, visually like watching this gameplay in action it looks like it could be pretty cool the serpent rogue is an action adventure game built around exploring a medieval fantasy world you play as a mysterious alchemist known as the warden who will craft brew boil and concoct potions all in your stead to protect the realm from the dreaded serpent rogue. There's a large world for you to explore. You'll be moving around, clearing this bramble, unearthing secret passages and access to new areas. Of course, being an alchemist, you will be using alchemy. You can craft and experiment with different ingredients to create unique potions with various effects. You can even shape shift into different creatures. Uh, you'll come across in the, the inhabitants of this cursed land and will have quests to complete, earning resources in addition to your main story and narrative. And they say that the actions you take will create these interesting sequences of cause and effect. If you keep too many creatures in one place, for example, this could attract these bloodthirsty reapers. If you forget to bury an enemy, this could attract corpse eating ghouls. Pretty interesting idea that they have these dynamic elements depending on your actions. I know a lot of games say that they do this, but the way they're describing this sounds pretty neat. The Serpent Rogue will be launching on April 26th. There's also a demo available on Steam currently if you wanted to try this before you buy it. Next up is King Arthur Knight's Tale. This is the newest game in this King Arthur series. This particular one is a turn-based tactical game that also mixes in character-centric RPG elements. Uh, Knight's Tale, they say, is a modern retelling of classic Arthurian mythology filtered through these dark fantasy tropes. So this is a turn-based combat game top-down perspective. You'll assemble this team of heroes, selecting from six different classes, and then you'll go out on missions, moving through these levels and engaging in tile-based, turn-based combat. Your characters, as they progress, they'll gain experience, leveling them up. You can unlock new skills. There'll be an equipment system where you can give them weapons and armor. Incur injuries in combat, you'll have to heal them, uh, cure curses, and try to have them recover from disease. And if a character dies, it is permanent and you'll have to recruit new heroes. There's also this interesting interaction where your characters in your party have their own personalities and motivations. So depending on the things that you do and the decisions you make, it's gonna affect them. They could actually even leave your party and turn against you. There's also with this morality chart that's gonna adjust based on your choices and that plays into both the narrative, but also gameplay elements. The game features four different difficulty modes. There is also this end game system in here so this is already in steam early access very positively rated and it will be leaving and officially fully launching on april 26 the current price is 44.99 dwarf romantic is this peaceful building strategy puzzle game where you create and manage an ever-growing landscape of villages and wilderness by placing down tiles so you start off with this stack of procedurally generated tiles and then one after the other you will draw the top tile from the stack and then place it in one of the available slots rotating it to try to get like the ideal fit based on the tiles that are next to it and then from this you will form these groups and combinations of landscapes you'll 
the there'll be forests, villages, bodies of water, and then you get rewarded essentially with points depending on how well those tiles fit together. Some tiles will have special objectives or quests, like for example, the windmill tile wants to border against six grain fields, or the locomotive wants to be connected with 10 tracks, or a deer wants to inhabit a forest with at least 50 trees in it. And if you fulfill the quest and the, the requirements, you're going to get bonus points essentially, continuing, letting you continue the expansion of your landscape. And then your game will end once you have fully used up all your stack of tiles. So as you expand your landscape, you can advance into these new, more colorful and diverse biomes, discovering pre-placed objectives and longer term tasks. And then through these tasks, unlock new tiles, new biomes and new quests. Really, really chill, cool looking game. Um, this one out of all of the games, I, many of these games have been positively rated. This is the best rated uh, early access title. It's got a ton of reviews, thousands of reviews. It's sitting at overwhelmingly positive right now. People really like this game. And it's again, it's just super chill. There's no combat. There's no like resource management. It's literally just placing tiles, but trying to do it well and trying to extend how many tiles you have access to, to rack up the highest score possible. It seems if you're looking for a nice game to just relax and chill with this Dorf Romantic looks like a good one. Uh, this will be leaving early access on April 28th and is priced at $13.99. And finally for this month's list, do you remember The Cycle, the PvEVP battle royale game that launched a few years ago? Well, it's gotten an overhaul and is re-releasing as a game called The Cycle Frontier, which by all accounts appears to be a like sci-fi version of Tarkov, basically. You'll go out there, you'll fight different enemies, there's some PvP elements, there's a lot of inventory management, you're going out completing objectives and then returning to your home base and repeating the process over and over again. It sounds kind of cool. I never got into Tarkov, but I've heard a lot of good things about it, and I like, like this kind of take on that formula. So this does appear like it is going to be launching in April. I've seen a few reports that have it pinned. There's no set date at the moment. And in fact, they're still going through beta events. They recently actually delayed a beta that they had planned. So it might not hit the April launch. But again, I have seen it reported that it is potentially coming out this month. We'll have to wait and see. If nothing else, even if we don't get the full release, um, there should be some betas in April for you to check out. And that just about does it for this month's look of the top 10 best looking new PC games coming in April 2022. Yeah, it's kind of a weird month. Not a lot of like huge big, big budget games that are going to get uh, super highly advertised. In fact, most of these games are either leaving early access or coming into early access. That's like a majority of our list. It is what it is. It's just a slower month um, when it comes to games. But hey, there's a lot of really cool, interesting looking stuff. There's always uh, interesting looking new games to come out. That's what I love about PC gaming so much like even if we're not getting a ton of uh, official releases early access can keep us uh, busy for a lifetime basically so anyways that's gonna do it thank you guys for watching as always hope you enjoy it and I'll see you in the next one take it easy